The Hawaii Rainbow Warriors exist as college football's greatest sideshow. The most remote Division I program in the country, a title unlikely to change hands until they grow balls to play football in Anchorage, they have existed on a literal island for their entire existence. Here, it's hard to build rivalries. Most form from proximity, and Hawaii has nothing but water. It's just hard to hate Hawaii. Not to say, no one's ever tried. In 1992, the Fresno State Bulldogs joined the Western Athletic Conference, or WAC for short. This is the beginning of the WAC's move to become college football's first super conference, one that eventually spanned from Louisiana to Idaho to Hawaii. The University of Hawaii was one of the conference's earlier pickups, being added in 1979. And in 1992, Fresno's very first year, Hawaii's having their best season to date going into week 7 with a win over Oregon and only one loss. Fresno State, on the other hand, is going into this game with a 3-3 record, yet with plenty of upside, mostly around future All-American and first-round quarterback Trent Dilfer. For the first time in the history of these two programs, they had meet as conference foes. What followed was the first of many shootouts between these two, with Dilfer and Hawaii star running back Travis Sims dismantling each other's opposing defense with ease. When the smoke finally cleared, Hawaii would come out the victor 47-45, on their way to winning their very first conference title, defeating Illinois in the Holiday Bowl. Fresno, too, would finish strong, ending up right beside Hawaii in the final AP poll on their way to a Freedom Bowl win over USC. This first game, while exciting, could hardly be called a rivalry game, and for years afterwards it would just be another in-conference game, yet it gives us the opportunity to meet the other half of this rivalry to come. Fresno State is located right between the glossy LA schools and the rich nerds of the Bay Area, in the middle of the San Joaquin Valley. As such, it's positioned itself as California's blue-collar alternative to LA and San Francisco. It has built their culture around the valley. They play tough, gritty, and above all, with a chip on their shoulder you only get from representing a forgotten piece of the nation's most well-known state. Over time, the tension would rise between the two as both Hawaii and Fresno State rose within their shared conference's perennial powers, a tension that would come to a head in 1999. Hawaii, despite going winless the previous season, is back to contending for a WAG title with a 4-2 conference record. Fresno State, on the other hand, is 5-1, the favorite to win it all, so long as they can go to Hawaii and take it from them. A tough ask, considering the Warriors are going into this game as one of the WAG's hottest passing offenses, in stark contrast to their run-heavy offenses of old. In offense, the Bulldogs are initially able to shut down with ease, beginning the game with a Hawaii 3 and out. The Bulldogs' offense is much more balanced, as shown by their opening drive consisting of three completions and four rushes on their way to drawing first blood. It's an opportunistic strategy employed by their head coach, future Atlanta Falcon Pat Hill. It's a balance in stark contrast to its counterpart on the other sideline, Hawaii head coach and former Atlanta Falcon June Jones. His run-and-shoot offense would come to define his Warriors throughout his tenure. It's also an offense that finally start to come alive towards the end of the first, allowing Kauai to tie the game at 7. The home team would shut out Hill's offense in the second quarter, and Hawaii's offense would respond in kind to bring the Warriors into the half up 13-7. And after a defensive battle in the third, Hawaii would find the end zone a mere 47 seconds into the fourth, rectifying their missed PAT to go up 21-7. It's here, with the game on the line, where Fresno's offense would finally come alive again, driving down the field twice to tie the game with only a minute and change left in the fourth. And if that wasn't bad enough for Hawaii, their attempt to get down the field quickly would abruptly end. For the first time in history, with a conference title at stake, this burgeoning rivalry will go into overtime. First overtime would consist of both offenses only being able to muster field goals, bringing the game into second overtime, where Hawaii would steal away the game with only inches left in bounds. Their win would ensure their coach would complete the biggest program turnaround college football has seen up till that point, only surpassed in record by Tulane's turnaround in 2022, bringing Jones multiple Coach of the Year accolades. Hill and his Bulldogs, on the other hand, wouldn't leave the islands with a heart-wrenching loss and growing resentment for the island program. 
A resentment then finally bubbled to the surface two years later. The events that followed started shortly before their game in 2001. Fresno State is flying out to Hawaii on board Aloha Airlines, a wine airline they reportedly trash on their way to Honolulu. When they landed, a Fresno player would reportedly lose their playbook, one that it allegedly make its way to a member of the Hawaii coaching staff. Finally, as Fresno made their way from their hotel to the stadium, the customary police escort Hawaii was supposed to offer was not present. Traffic was cited as the reason, but it didn't really matter. Fresno State was slighted, and as the plane story circulated, so did Hawaii. Even if some of the events are more hearsay than anything else. Fresno is going into this game as a group of five royalty, knocking off a trio of Power 6 schools on their way to this matchup, and are led by future first round pick David Carr. And now, they're playing mad. Thankfully for Hawaii, the Warriors are no slouch either, merging yet again as the WAC's most terrifying air attack under QB Nick Rolovich, with help from backup Timmy Chang. The game would begin in similar manner the 99 game did, with a Hawaii 3 and out, and Carr leading the dogs down to the end zone to draw first blood. Yet, while Hawaii was able to get out to a lead in 1999, Fresno would stay in the driver's seat throughout the first half, with Carr on his way to a monstrous 400-yard passing total. Hawaii would refuse to be completely left behind, however, staying within a single score of their California rivals going into the second half, where the Bulldogs began to finally pull ahead, and the game began to get a lot more ugly. Four personal fouls in the fourth quarter alone, along with some relatively dirty playing all around. A late hit here, a late hit on Carr here, roughing the kicker here, all in the span of 10 minutes. The game and the series as a whole was reaching its boiling point. All the bullshit before this game, all the heartbreaking losses, was piling up. As the game got uglier, Hawaii would begin to pick itself back up, first with a touchdown and two-point conversion to bring the game back within a field goal, and then recovering a disastrous Fresno fumble on their own three-yard line. Soon, for the first time that night, Hawaii would have the lead. And just as Fresno State took it back and looked keen on keeping that lead with a Hawaii three and out, Carr would once again fumble the ball away. And Hawaii, once again, would capitalize on it to take a four point lead with 13 seconds left on the clock. After a Hail Mary around 60 yards short of winning the game, Fresno State would leave Hawaii yet again in heartbreak. Fresno would finish 11 and three and somehow finished second to a 7-5 Louisiana Tech in the WAC, despite by far being the better team. All because of Hawaii, something the city of Fresno would not forget. 2002 for Hawaii is mostly remembered as the season-long coming-out party for Timmy Chang, a man who'd finish his career with the Warriors with not just the most passing yards in Hawaii history, but the most in the entire 135-year-long history of college football. A record that'd stand until being surpassed by Houston's Case Keenum. He was the perfect embodiment of June Jones' Rainbow Warriors, a Hawaiian Brett Favre who'd lead the nation passing yards and interceptions, who'd carry his team to victory enough to make up for it. His first game as a starter with Fresno State, however, will not be remembered for his play, despite laying 462 passing yards on the Bulldogs. It would not be remembered for the insane 22-point fourth quarter comeback the Warriors would have. No, this game is remembered for what happened immediately after Hawaii's comeback, when a screwdriver thrown from the stands almost hit June Jones on the way out. Like many stories in this rivalry, it's hard to confirm whether or not it actually happened. The screwdriver was never found and the only testimony is from Jones himself. But whether or not it even existed in the first place, this screwdriver would become a symbol for this rivalry. A symbol of a proud blue-collar school and a mutual feud with their counterparts in paradise. 2003 would cap off a three-game winning streak for the Warriors, one abruptly ended by a 70-14 shelling in Fresno. 49 of those 70 points would be scored in the first half, by the way. With Fresno State ending the game with 629 yards of combined offense. 
What's most shocking is that Hawaii wasn't even that bad that year. They'd finished the year with an 8-5 record, still helmed by Timmy Chang, with wins over Michigan State and Northwestern. They just laid a massive egg in this one, helped in no small part by Fresno State's notoriously loud fans and the Red Mile. The walk from the visiting locker room to Fresno's field is referred to as the Red Mile, a walk encircled by passionately drunk bulldogs heckling the visiting team. And Hawaii would often get the worst of it. For the most part, it's in jest. Former Hawaii players would remark on the impressive amount of homework the fans would do to shit on them, and some others would just laugh along with them. Heckling that adds to one of the most brutal playing environments in Group of Five football. The 2006 matchup between these two is my personal favorite of the series. It wasn't close, Fresno State was having a rare off here while Hawaii was on its way to an 11 win season. Yet it stands out as the highest scoring game and what has become one of the highest scoring rivalries in college football. To see its full majesty though, we'll have to go beyond the point differential and background hate and to their combined points per game, which shows this. 105 combined points triple-digit points in a college football game, which, mind you, is only two years removed from their 70-14 to in the game that achieved 84 combined points, which, in turn, was one year removed from their 83 combined point game. This rivalry, going into 2006, has averaged 65.6 combined points per game, a number that doesn't sound too absurd until compared to some other rivalries. During that same timeline, here's the combined points for Ohio State and Michigan. Iowa, Iowa State, Kansas, Missouri, Florida, Georgia, Army, Navy, and Utah, BYU. All are within the 40 to 50 point average that most competitive rivalries sit somewhere in. Some of the only rivalries to buck that trend are, predictably, some Western rivalries like Air Force, Colorado State, and USC, UCLA. Also, MAC rivalries for some reason, but they still remain at least 9 points on average behind Hawaii and Fresno State. Through this lens, we can see what these two teams and their rivalry is. The quintessential West Coast style. And more often than not, the loser between the two is simply the team that can't keep up. 2007 was Hawaii's year. Emerging throughout the season as the highest scoring squad in the nation, on the back of an eventual 4,343 passing yard season from starting quarterback Colt Brennan. But following their home game with Fresno State, the focus isn't on their team, but rather on their fans. A post starts going around following a tight 37-30 Warrior win of a Bulldogs experience at the game, and, well, it wasn't great. Spitting, cursing, fighting. The holy trinity of unruly fans. Like most every story this rivalry has, it's unclear how much of it is true, but nonetheless adds to the very real hostility these games have. Boise State fans who were next to travel to the islands were warned ahead of time, and security was tightened around the stadium. There was reason to suspect a similar rowdiness. The Broncos were an obstacle Hawaii has failed to overcome again and again. And defeating them will likely mean not just a WAC title, but a BCS Bowl berth, their very first. The stakes are high, and there's likely some pent-up frustration, but nothing ends up happening. The game was good, the fans were behaved, and Hawaii would remain on pace for an undefeated season. It really was just about Fresno State. Shortly after the 2007 season, June Jones would resign. On the surface, this move made little sense. He was a Hawaii alumni and celebrity on the islands, and his new position at SMU was at best a lateral move. What actually sparked this was an internal struggle between Jones and the athletic department, who had squandered its budget and failed to improve its decaying facilities. One bidding war later, and Hawaii had lost its winningest head coach of all time. But nevertheless would still be able to pull off an upset against a ranked Fresno in their own stadium the following year. The tide was changing though, and soon the rivalry and the conference that birthed it would fade away. In 2010, Boise State would push to leave the WAC for the Mountain West, with Nevada, Fresno State, and eventually a reluctant Hawaii following suit. Once the most prestigious group of five conferences in the nation, the Western Athletic Conference was dying. While this added some initial fuel to the fire, wanting to overcome the program seen as quote-unquote killing the conference, 
the rivalry would begin to lose its luster as Hawaii became less and less competitive in its new conference, while the Bulldogs remained a perennial group of five powerhouse. Hawaii's decaying status in its new conference wouldn't mirror its decaying stadium. Once one of college football's most unique and beautiful coliseums, the Rainbow Warriors would be forced to leave Aloha Stadium in 2020, since, for some reason, the steel supports wouldn't stop rusting. A new Aloha Stadium is in the process of being built, yet with how difficult it is to ship materials and heavy machinery onto the islands, it's unlikely to be finished anytime soon. Until then, the Warriors are relegated to their practice field, a venue almost suitable for high school games, which has further helped the decline of the once proud Hawaii football program. 2023 would mark the first year since 1992 the Fresno State and Hawaii game wouldn't be played annually, effectively ending one of college football's most heated, strange, and brief rivalries. For now, at least. It's easy to see a Hawaiian football renaissance, when or if the new stadium gets built. If the two are competing for conference titles again, and maybe even a playoff bid in the future, it's easy to see this rivalry picking up steam again. Until then, however, the two remain ambivalent, because after all, it's really hard to hate Hawaii.